Hey everyone, this is D, Movie Man, fellow cinephile, popcorn addict, and emerging film critic, coming to you with reliable recaps, reviews, and reactions. And today, I'm coming to you all with a review for Boy in the Corner, directed by Joshi Lee, co-written by Joshi Lee and Luciano De Amato, and starring Siren Vergara, Victoria Shepard, Akil Largi, and Sean Paleo. Story-wise, the film is centered around a young boy named Miles, whose life takes an unexpected shift when the growing presence of a local gang threatens to disrupt his dreams and aspirations. So, I'm going to start with the pros. I have plenty of thoughts to share on this one. Now, first off, let me go ahead and send a special shout out to Joshi Lee. He did personally reach out and he requested my thoughts on this film. It was definitely an unexpected surprise, but a pleasant surprise at the same time. And I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity to just share my thoughts. So for those who don't know, Joshi is a director, he's a producer, cinematographer, editor, writer, and the list goes on. He's worked on various short films as well as music videos. In fact, he was the director of photography for the film Love with Black Spots, directed by a good friend of mine, Oscar Winman Hyde, which I recently had the opportunity to review as well. However, this is his feature directorial debut I'm always excited about that. And it is a really, really solid debut. For starters, I really do appreciate the style and the aesthetic of this film. I've been a fan of classic black and white films since I was very young, same with plenty of TV shows. And I really appreciate how that element and that style is replicated in modern filmmaking as well. Especially with recent films like The Tragedy of Macbeth, Malcolm and Marie, Belfast, passing, and many more. I thought the letterbox framing was a really cool touch as well. Tomas a poor Madeira is our cinematographer here. And I just thought that was a really unique quality and element to the film, especially with the location shooting that we get here. Plenty of interesting shots, but my personal favorite was that reoccurring shot of the town from that cliffside. I, <laughs> every time that popped up, I was just like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love this, screenshot it, put it in the frame, we're good to go. <laughs> that was so on point. Next, we have the performances. I do think that pretty much everyone is really solid here in their respective roles, but I have to give kudos to Siren Vergara for really doing some heavy lifting as Miles. There was a lot that really resonated with me regarding his performance, especially when there was no dialogue. A lot of those moments are reliant on just facial expressions and non-verbals. And for me, I thought those are some of the most poignant moments. And along with that, I think that the supporting cast and just the cast as an ensemble, they really do help elevate this film. And in turn, they help elevate Siren's performance as well. Now, as I have said plenty of times before, that what is most important to me with film, and there's a lot to, you know, really look for and appreciate, but for me, storytelling is always my number one focus. If you don't have that, nine times out of 10, it's not gonna work for me. And if we are gonna have storytelling, then my hope is that they would be stories that have depth and dimension. When I spoke to Joshi about his inspiration for this film, he mentioned that in the UK, knife crime and grooming within gangs are very serious and prevalent issues. As a matter of fact, there have been 49,000 incidents that have happened this year, all of which have involved young people, which of course is shocking to hear, but this is a reality that's being highlighted. And a lot of that comes down to a lack of role models in modern day society, it also involves poverty and young adults and young children having their dreams suppressed instead of uplifted and, you know, pushed forward. A lot of that really informs what you see and those incidents and those issues to continue to take place. And this is a darker side of Britain that we're talking about here. And this is something that either doesn't get talked about, or if it is talked about, then it is mostly glamorized. 
which as you can imagine, is not helpful. So with that inspiration, this is based around real events and it is brought together to form this narrative with Miles as the focus. Having that foundation for the story is what really made this so impactful for me. Now, Josh, he did co-write this with Luciano De Amato, who previously helped produce the film Cycles. That is another one directed by Oscar Winman Hyde and that I also had the opportunity to review. I appreciated how the writing did highlight the subject and just provide some depth and some context to that subject. If you've seen my reviews, then you know that when it comes to film, there's a lot that I connect to personally and there are a lot of memories and experiences and you know feelings, all kinds of things that I connect to when I watch a film. And uh, this one was no different. Now, personally, I had a fairly positive and healthy upbringing. I lived in a very tight-knit community with plenty of friends and family on you know, nearly every other block, you know, in surrounding cities. So the feeling that gave me was always one of belonging. You know, I felt connected. I always felt secure and I always felt like I'm where I needed to be and I always felt safe. So whenever I think about my experiences growing up in the Midwest, as a child and those experiences, that's something I always look back upon with fondness and appreciation and just a lot of love and gratitude. But moving into adolescence, there were some unexpected disruptions that took place. And they happened around the time that I was moving, you know, into the next phase of my life. You know, I'm a young adult. I'm dealing with a lot of emotional and, you know, physical changes. And then on top of that, I'm having all this internal damage that I'm having to process at the same time. But despite that challenge, I still had the support of my family to carry me through that. So imagine if that was not the case. Imagine if I had all the wrong influences. What if people never told me, you know, how gifted I was, how talented I was, or really motivated me in that way. What if it was the opposite? Who would I be? What would my life look like? It's a very scary thought. I say all that to say that some of those things came to mind while I was watching, and I actually got somewhat emotional in some of those moments, especially in some of those scenes where Miles is very contemplative and he is really just trying to make sense of his world, trying to make sense of life, trying to make sense of who he is. I remember all of that. And given that this film does have a darker tone and the narrative is something that's a bit more raw and in your face, I like that even with the ending, there was still some ambiguity there. When we see that final shot, it makes you question, is this a hopeful moment or an ominous one? I like that there was still room for interpretation because life itself is very uncertain. So I like the fact that we were left with that moment to kind of wonder what will become of this person. All right, now I'm going to jump over to the cons. Yeah, there's, you know, <laughs> there's not a lot to write home about here, but just a couple of things worth mentioning. If I did have any cons, it's simply that I wanted to learn just a little bit about Miles and his personal outlook on life. I do understand that he is a quiet character and kind of awkward and he's not very vocal, but I do think there were opportunities from us to hear from him directly and get a greater sense of his voice and his perspective in that way. I think that was something that I felt was missing just to an extent. I also would have liked to have seen just a little bit more development with Miles and his experiences with the gang. I think the grooming aspect of it is very important and I even like that the film and just the story really explores that because that's something that absolutely isn't talked about because I think even that word, you know, I think there's a very specific thing people think about but there are a lot of other dynamics um, that can fall within grooming and I appreciated how this film highlighted that. But as a result, I would have liked to have seen more of the consequences, you know, the shift in his behavior or the shift in his ideology and the mindset. And that would also tie in with what I said about wanting to see more of his personal perspective and then now seeing where that is, you know, 
going downhill and just completely going awry. Lastly, although I was cool with the final act, I would have liked just a little bit more context and clarity over how a certain conflict was resolved. I do understand it. I understand the point of that moment, but some additional context and detail I think would have made that moment just a little bit more plausible for me. This is a very serious, very dark, and very precarious situation we are dealing with. So I think that if we were able to understand more about that dynamic, or at least hear more of the dialogue, then I think that it would make more sense and it would feel like, oh, wow. So that's how this was able to take place. So I'm going to give Boy in the Corner a B. I have said plenty of times and I will continue to say that I have such an appreciation for independent filmmaking and just the intimate and honest nature of the stories that are told. And this film really is no exception. I do also hope that given the seriousness of this subject that this film in its own way continues to shed light on that and continues to just push conversations, you know, push dialogue regarding that and hopefully getting to a place where we can change that for the better. And sometimes that's all it takes, you know, it's just the awareness and just having that and the changes that that could lead to, I think is so important. And I'm very, very grateful for that being highlighted in this film. You know, I'm always here for a feature directorial debut and Joshi, I look forward to the upcoming projects. I can't wait to see what's coming next. You know, the foundation has been set. It's a really solid one and I just really look forward to you building upon that and just seeing all that's coming your way. I'm absolutely here for it and I will continue to support regardless. <laughs> Boy in the Corner is currently streaming on Apple TV, Prime Video, Sky Store and Google Play in the UK and it's currently available on Prime Video in the US. You guys are free to check it out, leave your thoughts below and let me know what you think. So once again this is D Movie Man signing off and I'll see you at the movies.